Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to be taking a look at this right here. This is the Chogokin Gundam Ariel by Tamashi Nations. Now, as far as I know, this is the most expensive version of Ariel available right now. Coming in at about $150 retail or 140 euro, this is definitely one premium Ariel. Now, just in case you don't know what a Chogokin is, this is a line of action figures by Bandai that have a metal frame. These have been going for a long, long time and have quite the dedicated fan following. So how they approached Ariel is going to be quite interesting to check out. But anyway, before we get into this, this video would not have been possible without a sponsor. Honkai Star Rail, a new multi-platform galactic fantasy RPG from Hoyoverse, the makers of Genshin Impact. A free cross-platform RPG that's free to play on PC, free to play on mobile, and free to play on PS5 from later this year. And with more than 80 million downloads in less than 5 months since its launch, you know you can't go wrong. In version 1.3, you're going to witness the epilogue of the story on the Xianzhou Lohu and experience a brand new version of the much-loved simulated universe. As a trailblazer, embark across a fantastical sci-fi universe, explore different worlds, searching for treasures, solving puzzles, and increasing your power in a semi-open world. Destroy your enemies in turn-based combat, simple to pick up but tactical and nuanced the deeper you get, with over 20 awesome unique playable characters with their own backstories, abilities, and style. Experience two new limited 5-star characters, Imbibder Lune, elegant and noble water and dragons, a powerful imaginary type DPS of the path of destruction, manipulate the flow of water to attack enemies. Hu Xuan, haughty and ambitious, she's a quantum type character of the path of preservation, a damage reducing support character. In version 1.3, you'll see the story that follows the main Shenzhou storyline and introduces a new version of the simulated universe with rogue like gameplay. And also log in for 7 days in a row to claim 10 Star Rail special passes, so try Honkai Star Rail for free by clicking that link in the description and use my redemption codes to redeem 50 Stellar Jade. So on busting the Chogokin Gundam Ariel out of the box, what we've got is the Ariel itself inside of one of those almost metal build style foamy boxes. We've got a whole bunch of accessories include the stand, but first let's check out that Ariel itself. So on getting the Chogokin Ariel out of the box, the first thing you will notice is this is hefty. Now I'm not really sure what really sets a metal build and a Chogokin apart because they're both by the same company, but I will... Well, the first, well, one thing I noticed is it's very shiny compared to the matte finish that we usually see on a metal build and the actual alloy going on inside of it is a lot shinier and a little bit more glintier. And as far as I can see, the plastic right here is molded, not actually painted. The blue seems to be painted, but otherwise very similar in a way to metal build figures. So just taking a look around at the aerial itself, this is very, very nicely detailed. We've got a lot of decals on the surface there isn't really much in the lines of what i'd say is like the kind of factory imperfections you'd see like mold lines nub lines or should i say nub marks basically where it would have been molded and assembled in the factory it does look quite good the colors are definitely unique we've got a gold on this instead of the yellow we would have seen with any of the model kits so that may be to your liking or not to your liking and the one thing that kind of is very noticeable to me at first glance is a lot of the actual detail in the white is a little bit on the lost side. Mainly, I guess I'm too used to panel lining model kits to kind of get that kind of extra detail. Actually, let's throw this down beside the full mechanics so you can see what I'm talking about. So first off, there is the Chogokin we're looking at today on the left, and there is the full mechanics 1100 on the right. It is in the bit on form, but it will do for the sake of comparison. Now, as you can see there, there really is a lot more viewable or noticeable detail on the full mechanics because all of the lines have been lined compared to what we're seeing on the Chogokin. Even though there is a lot of similarities between the two, there's a lot of differences as well when it comes to the design. Some parts, for example, like the ankle armor is much more flared out right here on this version on the full mechanics. It's quite large compared to what we're seeing over here on the Chogokin. So when it comes to comparing a model kit with an action figure like the one we're looking at right here, this isn't really straightforward. 
For example, if you like building, then it's always going to be the model kit. If you don't like building, it's going to be the action figure. The price difference is pretty massive, if not like one third of the price or so, maybe even less. I'll pop it up on the screen right now. And the amount of detail you get in the end is really up to yourself because you can assemble it as it is out of box, panel line it like I have right here to get that extra little bit of detail, or you can even paint and modify yourself. So the sky really is the limit. Also, if you're not a huge fan of that gold, because I don't know, would Ariel even have gold? Then the model kit all the way. Another thing that definitely stands out to me so far is just how dull the actual shell units in the Chogokin look. These, I guess, are in the, well, turned off compared to what we're seeing on the full mechanics right here where they're nice and bright, shining through the clear plastic. And then if you take a look at the high grade, that was even more ridiculous with some of the most beautiful looking clear parts I've seen on a collectible to date. So there is a lot of pros and cons with the overall look of this particular figure right here. And if you're gonna put out one pro, without a doubt, is the metal joints just look so cool, especially up in the shoulders. Jumping into that full 360 degree spin so you can see every angle of the Chogokin aerial for yourself. And the one thing that definitely strikes me with this is, this feels to me like a good rendition of the original art we would have seen of Ariel before the Witcher Mercury even came out. The really kind of almost pale washed out art that came out pre-release. That almost looks like that's what this is based on. Because the white is so soft, the details aren't too pronounced in it. That's the kind of vibe it definitely does have. So if that's what you're looking for, that might be what you'll find right here. So now jumping into some size comparisons, and we've already seen the Chogokin beside the full mechanics right there. There is the high grade Gundam Aerial, so quite a bit smaller, as you'd expect. So this is definitely closer to the 1100 zone. And speaking of 1100, there it is beside a generic sized master grade kit that is the MG Oryx 782 version 3.0, and beside the Master Grade, Zeta Gundam Verka. Jumping on to the accessories, and this is a figure that comes with quite a bit. Now, the one thing that I noticed that is not inside of either of these boxes is a change of shell units. So it seems like we're always going to have the dull off version with this particular figure. But besides that, a lot in here. Let's check it all out. So before I talk about anything else in regard to the accessories in here, at this point I just opened up the manual and saw that this thing does have LEDs and included batteries, which is pretty cool. You pull this tab and then they're ready to go. You press the button and... Uh... At first I thought the batteries were dead. You press the button and you get nothing. The eyes are painted, so unless you're in the darkest, darkest, darkest dark, you won't even notice a difference. Now, the only way I know the batteries are actually working is if you flip them over around back and turn them on and you can actually see the rear camera on the head lights up. So this is definitely an odd choice of all the LED options you could have done with an area like full lighting up shell units or something like that. They just went with some eyes that are painted over. Weird choice. So first up in here we do have a full stand, this needs to be assembled out of box but this is a nice stand. We also have two little supplementary racks for on the sides which are an option. To attach them you just poke out some little hole 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 protectors and then you just pop the racks on like so and these are for attaching the hands, weapons etc. We also have to attach a little cradle up top in which to attach the aerial onto and then this thing is set. It has all the moving options you usually get with one of these figures. That means we've got a angle changey peg up top which can lock. We've got a lengthener right here also can lock and we do have an angle changey piece for the entire stand itself. So the usual we see with these kind of figures. And as for the attachment, aerial just drops on into it like so and attaches on very nicely. So that's a good base adapter. As for the equipment we have in here, first up is the Beam Sabers. When it comes to the handle on these, these are quite nice. They're not your normal just simple handles because they've got a nice little bit of silver detailing on them as well. These can be stored around back in the backpack like so. These are on a pivoting joint which is extremely, extremely nice. And when it comes to the hands for holding on to these, first off we do have a grand total of 10 hands in this box. That's 8 alternate, the two that were already on Ariel. Grab a hand for holding beam sabers. Attaching and detaching and reattaching hands and this is super simple. No tight, overly hard joints to attach on. And I saw in the manual there that apparently Ariel can reach back and grab the beam saber handle while it's still in the backpack. And yes, it most certainly can. 
which is always a really cool feature. The beams in here are in a nice frosted blue, they just pop on in like so, and that is what Ariel will look like with one of its beam sabers. Now one really cool thing about this particular figure right here is, when these are not in use, the usual thing occurs, you pull off the beam, attach the handle into the backpack and usually you have nowhere to put the leftover beam. But those little racks we put down there in the stand, that's where you can actually put these when they're not in use. And that is super, super handy. So next up in here, we've got the beam rifle. This is in a nice metallic gunmetal paint and we've got some nice decaling on the surface as well. We've got a white piece of plastic in there for the side section. And attaching this into the hand is the usual kind of way that you do with these kind of figures where you just kind of wrestle the handle into the rubberized fingers just like so and thankfully not too difficult. When attaching this we do have a little bit of an optional piece. We've got these for the left or right hand as well as a left and right hand beam rifle holding hand. But basically what this does is it keeps the hand in position when it is attached. It goes on like a little bit of a cuff. When the hand attaches on via the ball joint, it just stops it from rotating around on the ball for nice shooting poses that will not drop. That is what it looks like with the beam rifle attached and so far, so awesome. We do have two bit staves like we would have seen with every version of Ariel so far that attach onto the end of this to lengthen it. This is part of the bit on form and just to change things up I'm going to go with the bit on form first and then build up the escutcheon a little bit later on. Next up we've got this energy blade effect for using with the rifle. Now we've seen these across the various different aerials so far. This one is a nice pearlescent finish. It's broad and quite long. Not quite as long as what we saw with the full mechanics but it is quite long. So that right there is what it looks like attached. The pearlescent effect on this really does work very nicely with the fact that it is translucent. It catches and reflects light so, so nice. And overall, this is a nice extension to the rifle. Probably the nicest looking one I've seen on an aerial so far. Now, we'll mention without that little bit of a wrist adapter part we put on earlier on, the wrist is a little too floppy to actually hold up this and the beam, so it is pretty cool that Bandai did include that, and that is a good idea as an item to include with these figures. It'd be nice to see those with some kits as well. When this is not in use, we do have some options. Option the first is we have this little bit of an adapter segment like so, which attaches into the side of the rifle. This adds a ball joint onto it so you can attach it around back onto Ariel's backpack like so. This can be done on either or side depending on how you want to outfit your Ariel. If you don't want it attached to the Ariel at all, then you've got more options. First off, to store your big old beam, that can be stored just beside the beam saber beams on the stand, which is phenomenal. And the same goes with the rifle. If you don't want it on the Ariel whatsoever, it can slot onto that left hand side rack just like so. That is pretty cool, nice storage. We do have some extremely nice hand options in here, as well as what we've seen holding hands for the beam sabers, holding hands for the beam rifle, the fists that are attached on already. We also have multiple different types of widespread open hands, super widespread open hands like this right hand right here and more relaxed open hands like this left hand right here. We have two of each and when these hands are not being used, they can be stored once again on the rack down here. This is really good besides one thing. Hands that have not been attached yet to the aerial all hold on good and tight for me, but hands that have been attached to the aerial already feel like they've been stretched out a little bit and are attaching on here very loosely and a bit of a fall or loss risk. That to me is a little on the strange side. You think they'd be the same ball joints as the wrists themselves to make sure they hold. Last up when it does come to the accessories in here is the bit staves. These look absolutely phenomenal in the nice colors of plastic and paint that we would have seen with the rest of the aerials so far. These are extremely detailed and look really good. First off, we're going to recreate the bit form with these. It's the same as we've seen time and time again with different versions of aerial. You just slap them on the shoulders, arms, hips and around back and this is what you get. Once again, highly detailed, look great, add some nice bulk to the aerial but there's something about the gold the pure white and the shiny nice blue on this version as well as the soft detail on the white that makes this one look a little bit more regal than what we would have seen with other releases. One little bit of bad news is we don't have any kind of stands or parts included in here to show any of these bit staves in flight like we would have seen with the SH Figuarts Arts version but one good thing is we do have a spare V-Fin included inside of the box which is always awesome and something I wish Gunpla would do as well. You get these all of the time with these Tamashii Nation figures and that is good. That is the biggest break risk on one of these figures. So finally when it does come to attaching all the bit staves together 
to create the escutcheon, we do actually have a little bit of adapter in here. Now this adapter is not too bad. It is clear, so it's not too noticeable when everything is attached. Everything attaches onto it rock solid and perfect. No issues whatsoever. And finally, you do have to put a handle onto it. Now we'll mention this handle seems like it can be flipped if you want to flip it. So that does mean you can probably have this on either or arm. It does attach into both the hand and the forearm at the one time for a double rock solid connection. And that combined with the fact that this kit does have a rotating forearm means posing the shield is easier and better than ever with this particular figure. It looks pretty awesome on, but the question really is right now, how much articulation does this alloy framed figure actually have? Let's test it out. Oh yeah, also the shield can be stored in the rack as well when it's not in use. So this is an awesome rack. Things can kind of fall out of it quite easily. Would be nice if they actually clicked in as opposed to kind of just rested there. Uh, you wouldn't want there to be an earthquake, that's for sure, but still pretty cool. So finally now jumping into the articulation and first off this is rock solid, metal solid even. This will not budge at all, even comically so. It is a little bit stiff to even pose. This almost looks like at first glance, especially with the way that I'm holding it, like it doesn't actually move at all. Now it is a bit limited with its posing options, I guess let's test it out and see. So when it comes to the overall posability and articulation, this kit isn't that great. It's limited in so many different places. First off, whenever I move the legs, it loses its front and side skirting armors. They pop off so easily. We've got so many limitations at the hips, the ankles, the waist joint, the shoulders can't reach around too much. It's very, very limited. We do have some nice joints. The knees are incredibly nice. We've got a lot of nice twisting in the legs and we do have some good elbows as well. But it is all the core aspects like the feet, the ab crunch, and the hips that ridiculously limit this. So this is about the best you're gonna get, but I will say it is rock solid and it's got a super stiff frame that feels stronger than what you'd get with a metal build. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And this is a little bit of a mixed bag of a figure, but in the end, I feel it does all come up pretty damn good. Now, articulation is definitely its weakest aspect. You're not gonna get the greatest poses out of it, but you will get a couple. Besides that though, it does everything quite well. Aesthetically, at first I felt maybe this isn't as nice as other things out there, especially when you compare it to the price points you'd see with something like the full mechanics, which can look as good or better, even out of box. But then again, that is very, very subjective. This figure right here kind of captures an element, a cute, soft version of Ariel that I feel we saw in the original arts of this particular mobile suit that newer kits, etc., did not. It's very unique and strange. It has a lot of nice accessories. They all work out absolutely perfect. It's got a nice stand and does make a very nice display. So all I can say is, do you want a little bit of a more subtle, soft version of Ariel that's really high quality with a ridiculously strong inner skeleton that makes a great display, but at the same time can't be posed up too much? Then this is the one you'll be looking for, especially if you're not into building model kits and you want something a little bit larger than the SH figure arts. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video. And as always, I will see you next time. Once again, this video right here, and none of these videos would be possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and here on the channel memberships, including 10 Soldier YT, Caleb Engelhart, Dashil Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, Lawrence Seahack, Orgy59061, and Van Fawn.